first of all, I want to say welcome to Islam. Thank you. Why Andrew Tate's actions are a betrayal to Islam. That you don't want to discuss Islam too much on podcasts, yeah. and I completely understand. Let's talk about controversy surrounding Andrew Tate, who has been in the spotlight for his controversial remarks and associations. I'm not holding back, so let's get into it. Andrew Tate, who recently claimed to have embraced Islam, is now at the center of a heated debate. Some are questioning the authenticity of his conversion, while others are scrutinizing his recent behavior and associations. Is there a reason you were drawn more to Islam than Christianity? I read both books. Let's unpack this. Let's address the elephant in the room. Andrew Tate's alignment with far-right figures like Tommy Robinson. Tate's attempt to chase relevance by endorsing people known for their anti-Islamic and racist rhetoric is deeply troubling. His public support for figures who spew hate undermines the very values of Islam he claims to uphold. For instance, Tate's frequent use of derogatory terms with racist connotations is not just offensive, it's a direct contradiction to the principles of Islam. These terms, especially in the context of British history, are deeply rooted in abuse and discrimination against people of color. In the 1970s, similar terms were used to justify violence and discrimination against people with brown skin. Tate, who grew up in Luton, should be acutely aware of this history and the harm these terms continue to cause. Let's be clear, there is no excuse for using such language. When KSI made similar mistakes, he faced backlash and was held accountable. Tate should be held to the same standard. The repeated use of offensive language and the blatant disregard for its historical context is inexcusable. Moving on, Tate's promotion of far-right ideologies and his attempt to portray himself as a champion of traditional masculinity are troubling. His rhetoric seems designed to appeal to a far-right audience, but it's coming at the expense of spreading hate and division. This is not just a personal choice, it has real-world consequences. For example, his support for Tommy Robinson, a well-known figure with a history of promoting anti-Islamic sentiments, stains his credibility and raises questions about his true motivations. Tate's rhetoric also highlights a significant issue, the false dichotomy of us versus them. He and his far-right allies are perpetuating a narrative that migrants and Muslims are to blame for a range of societal issues, a narrative that is not only misleading but harmful. This scapegoating ignores the real reasons behind societal challenges and shifts the focus away from systemic issues. Consider the broader context of migration and colonial history. Britain's history of colonization and exploitation has played a major role in shaping the migration patterns we see today. Many of the people who came to the UK from former colonies did so to help rebuild a country that had previously exploited their own lands. These migrants were invited to the UK under the British Nationality Act and their contributions have been significant. The irony is that the same people who benefited from these contributions now turn around and blame migrants for issues that are far more complex. For example, the UK's involvement in World War I and II saw significant contributions from soldiers from the colonies, including Punjabi Muslims. Their sacrifices were crucial to Britain's war efforts. After the wars, the UK invited people from these colonies to help rebuild the country. Now some are complaining about the very people they once welcomed. Tate's approach of blaming immigrants and Muslims for various issues while ignoring the historical context and contributions of these communities is deeply flawed. His rhetoric seems designed to exploit fears and grievances rather than address the real issues at hand. Furthermore, Tate's inconsistent stance on global issues adds another layer of hypocrisy. He criticizes Western policies while simultaneously endorsing figures who are complicit in those same policies. For instance, his criticism of Israeli policies towards Gaza contrasts sharply with his support for figures who advocate for similar policies. This double standard undermines his credibility and reveals a lack of genuine commitment to addressing injustice. The far-right rhetoric that Tate is endorsing is not just harmful, it's a distraction from real issues. 
By focusing on migrants and Muslims as scapegoats, Tate and his allies are avoiding meaningful discussions about systemic problems. The violence and chaos seen in recent riots are a direct result of this harmful narrative, which only serves to deepen divisions and spread fear. In the end, the far-right figures Tate is aligning with are turning on him, revealing the instability and betrayal inherent in seeking acceptance from such groups. This is a reminder that those who promote hate and division will ultimately betray even their closest allies. To Muslims and everyone watching, remain vigilant but not fearful. Do not let the hate of others dictate your response. Instead, focus on unity and strength within your communities. Islam teaches peace and tolerance, and while we must defend ourselves if attacked, we should strive to do so in a way that aligns with our values. Andrew Tate's journey serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of chasing relevance and approval from divisive figures. The only path to true acceptance and peace is through maintaining integrity and staying true to one's values. For Muslims, that means upholding the principles of Islam and focusing on building unity and strength in the face of adversity. Let's continue to stand firm in our beliefs, support one another, and work towards a more just and inclusive society. Until next time, stay strong and stay true to your values.